getting some, some flat from the fellas lately. I get embarrassed on how I say my name now. I'm a Sicilian um, in blood from Augusta, Georgia. So I say Graziano, and they're like, you shouldn't say it like that. And then I say Graziano, and they say, that doesn't sound right either, so now I've got a complex. I'm Trip. <laughs> Now he's hers, very nice, but she had to break the ice. Um, and I love that story because I think, I think it really does embody uh, my relationship with the Lord. Um, lots of times I feel like I'm the one pursuing Him, and I'm the one um, who is giving my life over to Him. But it really is the opposite way. The more I look back, the more I see it's Him who's pursuing me. And, and we serve a God, and we have a Savior who has pursued us in fullness of love, and fullness of truth, and he pursues us beyond what we could ever hope and imagine, and he loves us beyond what we could hope and imagine. And that's truly why we're here tonight. We're not here to promote a program that'll happen, but we're here to promote our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, it is to him that we owe all things, and it is in him that we live, and we move, and we have our being. Um, so, 2,000 years ago, Jesus really did break the ice once and for all. Um, and he said this, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even if he dies. And we see here that it's belief in him that brings life, but it's following him that brings the light of life for us to navigate by. So why is the Greensboro Fellows Program here? It is simply to illuminate who he is so that we can believe and trust in him, and then it's setting aside a year of your life to learn what it truly means to follow this Jesus. Um, and this is what excites me more than anything, that, that we get to be a part and partner and co-labor with the Lord um, to foster belief in him and to, to reveal who he is because when we truly know who he is we can't help but serve him and love him and then to learn how to follow him and follow him well in a way that is going to be a light to the nations um, so uh, it's in line with Jesus teaching and anybody who knows me knows that Robbie Zacharias is my hero um, and he says this there is no greater discovery than seeing God as the author of your destiny and this is our heart's desire for anyone who comes through this program, for anyone who's affiliated with this program, for anyone who helps this program out, that we would all begin to see that there is truly no greater discovery than seeing God as the author of our destiny. Um, so four years ago, God broke the ice a little bit more in my life. Um, I was working at a, at a church in town, and we started this thing called Experience, and some of our teams here tonight... Um, so four years ago, we start this, this summer camp for about 80 kids, and they come through, and for two weeks, we did um, games in the morning, loud music, hyped them up, um, we did scavenger hunts through the city, we did all kinds of fun stuff, then we studied scripture together every day, and at the end of the day, we would bring in a leader from the community who would come and speak and really invest in their lives. And what we saw happen was amazing, the transformation that could happen in just two weeks. And so, you know, at the end of it, I remember us all sitting around firehouse subs at the table and saying, wow, 
we really want to do this full time with our lives. And, uh, and we were really excited about it, but God always kind of winds the road a little different ways than you think it's going to go. And, and the road winded, and um, we, didn't, we didn't do it again, but this dream in my heart stayed. And, and I couldn't shake it, and in the meantime, I ended up doing some volunteer work at the Center for Creative Leadership. I got to coach some college students during their time there, and I saw some amazing work that they do in developing young leaders. And with this dream in my heart, I began to um, put together some of the curriculum that we got to use with those students. And I wanted to um, keep building this program and, and making it better in one day with the hopes of being able to do it again. Um, also, in the meantime, decided to start volunteering at Young Life and, and hooked up with David Page and uh, got to go full circle. A lot of us here went to Western Guilford together and uh, I got placed in my old high school to get to, to minister to kids in the same position I was just years before. And, and also, I started this journey looking for a new church and, and through my affiliation with David, uh, with Young Life, he said, you know, Tripp, you've been looking for two years for a church. You need to try out this place called Church of the Redeemer. So I did. It immediately felt like home, hooked up with Alan, and within a couple months, um, I get a call from both of them, and they say, you know, Tripp, we've been praying about this thing called a fellows program. You want to grab lunch one day? And I said, sure. I didn't know what a fellows program was, but we get to Chick-fil-A, and Keith Kaiser, we got to Chick-fil-A, and, uh, <laughs> and we, uh, we sat down, and they start to tell me what this thing called a fellows program is, and in my head I'm going, O-M-G. <laughs> um, and every time I think of O-G, I don't know if y'all seen the SNL skit where, where um, Will Ferrell plays Jesus, but somebody, somebody comes up behind him and scares him and he says, oh my dad. <laughs> that's my favorite SNL skit. Um, but that's, that's how I was feeling, like, oh my dad. like. This is what I've been dreaming and planning for and wondering if it would ever happen. And I'm sitting at a table where it's actually happened. And my, I remember trying to play it cool and all I wanted to do is be like, you guys sit here, I'm gonna run home, I'm gonna show you because I have been making pie charts, I have been making tree graphs, I have been writing down a list of everything I want in this fellows program that you're trying to tell me about, like I know more than you. <laughs> but, but I didn't, I was just sitting there like, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> tell me more, tell me more. So, um, but over the course of the next six months, um, we sat down, we met monthly, sometimes more than once a month, and, and we began to knock out, if we do this thing, what's it going to look like? And, and so I had some non-negotiables, Alan had some non-negotiables, David had some non-negotiables, and we just started saying, what's the best way that we can build the kingdom in Greensboro? And, uh, and so this, this is the result. And, and it's pretty neat to think that a few conversations that happened, uh, I, I kind of see it like a, an amazing novel. One of their books we read was, believe it or not, a Robbie Zacharias book called The Grand Weaver. And in this book, he talks about how God truly is the author of our destiny. And, and he will make these different threads and strands weave together in all kinds of ways. And, and I'm sitting here at a Chick-fil-A table, I've prayed for this conversation for four years, didn't even know I was having it until they said it. They've been praying two years each for this thing, unbeknownst to me. I go to prayer groups now with Brett Greaves and his buddies, and they've been praying for something like this for years. And, and we hear all kinds of stories of how Greensboro, God has laid this thing on Greensboro's heart. And, and so every day, almost every day, I am excited to hear that somebody else is saying, wow, this is an answer to prayer. Like God truly is moving. And, um, and so it, it makes my heart glad. But, um, you know, I don't know the scope. I don't know the scope of what this thing's going to become. I'm, I'm going to tell you some specifics tonight. But it truly is in God's hands. It truly is in His hands, the scope of this thing. But I truly believe it can be big. And I also believe that the scope of it will partly be shaped by the people in this room who, who feel it. Feel the, the calling to come alongside, and people later who feel the calling to come alongside. And, and as the fellow spoke earlier, you know, God says that, that people will know who He is by the love that we have for one another. And, and I believe that's what God's building in Greensboro. I truly believe Greensboro can be and will be a destination for young people to come, to be developed and discipled, to take the gospel to all the nations. I, I, I believe that in my heart of hearts. You cannot convince me otherwise. And I believe that a lot of you here believe the same thing. Um, 
So, I've said that. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I'll be honest with you guys. I, I really first set out, um, once we got going, I started feeling the pressures, and, and immediately I set out to run an impressive program. Um, but it has been over the course of this year, and over the course of, of having a new family with me, that, that I've truly learned, like, God really just desires us to know his love and his truth, and to worship his son, and to worship him, and to do it together and walk together. And that is, that is my heart's desire, and I, I, I plead with you to pray for that in our city, with our young people, and, and that he will continue to do his work here the way he started. And it says that he is faithful to complete the good work that he begins in us. So we stand on that tonight. Um, but I truly believe God's placed before us individuals. I believe he's placed cities. And I believe he's placed nations um, on the heart of people in this city to come together. And I believe it is entirely possible to reach the world through a small group of people. He did it once, and he's going to keep doing it. Um, so... There we go. Mission statement. Aww. That's the fellows down in St. Augustine, uh, historic and oldest settlement in the nation. But the Greensboro Fellows Program exists to develop and disciple passionate young believers to devote themselves to the Lord while impacting their community with the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's Chris doing his thing. Um, and during their nine months here in Greensboro, we hope that each fellow will impact our local high schools, universities, churches, and marketplace with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the weekly schedule, here, here's what we do every week, if you were wondering, even if you weren't. Internships. So every Monday through Wednesday, the fellows work between 20 and 25 hours in an internship in a local business. Um, they learn the skills that, that they need for going on to be young professionals. And, and this is a time that we've seen amazing growth. Um, we've seen awesome partnerships develop. We've seen um, you know, the older generation learning from the younger and definitely the younger from the older. Um, but we hope and desire, one reason we pair internships with apologetics and the rest of the program is so that we know how beautiful it is on the mountains or the feet of those who bring good news. And we, we truly desire to develop and train and disciple fellows to bring good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ wherever they walk, including wherever they end up working the rest of their lives. Um, discipleship. So one hour every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning from 7 to 8 a.m., we are in the Word. We are sharing our testimonies, memorizing Scripture, studying the impact of Jesus in the world. We're holding each other accountable and lots of other things. We're getting mad at people falling asleep. We're uh, charging a dollar for every minute that we're late. Uh, but we, we have a good time. We have some rules. But, but we have a really good time. And it's amazing to see like what happens when a group of people will beat the sun up to worship God. It is an awesome, awesome thing. Um, we have mentors. One hour oh, a week. There you are. Uh, the fellows meet with the mentor in the community. And... Uh, and they do that for support, encouragement, and accountability. Um, Brett and Chris's relationship has really encouraged me. I've, I've been most exposed to, to what's happened between them. And, and even hearing Brett say how much he's blessed by, by having a fellow in his life has been a really cool thing for me. And, and something where we see like this truly can be transformational for the entire community. Um, we have family dinners. Every Tuesday night we eat and share about the week as well as hear a teaching or testimony. This has become one of the richest times of our week. A time where... It really has allowed us to become like family as we live and eat together. I've always said I think Jesus' finishing move is eating. Read through the gospel, and every time he wants to make a point, he eats something. He does. He does. So, it's awesome. All right. Classes. Uh, six hours per week we're in classes, uh, and we actually just got accredited by Reformed Theological Seminary for next year. So now any fellow who comes through our program will leave with six elective credit hours towards a seminary degree, which I'm very excited about. I think that's one, one thing I love about this program is it's not just spiritual formation, but there is a lot of added value to a resume, to professional experience, to leadership development, um, to development in their education. Um, we're hitting the full gamut of added value to one's life during the nine months that the fellows are here. Um, so Thursday and Friday mornings we have classes. This is Alan actually teaching on um, 
We kind of went like elementary school that day. He talked about a box of Legos, <laughs> which we do more than Legos, guys. But um, it, it was really a good lesson. We learned about church history through Legos, um, but we're not usually sitting on the floor like a kindergartner like that. Um, but we learned church history, apologetics, theology, the life of Jesus, the book of Acts, financial peace. There's a lot of practical life application stuff that we learned. Leadership, leadership in the workplace. One of my favorite things that we do is every Friday morning, a business owner or executive level leader from the community comes and speaks to the fellows for an hour and a half. And, and what we're seeing here and what we're hoping is, is imparted to the fellows is a sense of leadership and a sense of influence and, and how to be excellent in the workplace, how to have influence in the workplace, not for the sake of moving up or for the sake of having influence, but for the sake of the gospel. That when people look at believers in Jesus Christ, they see the most gentle, the most loving, the most truthful, the most ethical people of integrity, people of love. And, uh, and they begin to ask, who really is this Jesus? That's, that's our ultimate goal. Um, we're, we will study wisdom literature, world religions, and dating and marriage. That's coming up um, in our curriculum. Every week, the fellows have to volunteer for 10 hours in the community, um, volunteering in local ministries or nonprofit organizations. So each week, I already said that, this year we have volunteers in Young Life, Boy Scouts of America, the International Community, and Iron Sharpens Iron, which is actually a high school inner city ministry at Grace Community Church. Um, but we have five fellows in Young Life, and it was awesome to see if anybody was at All City Club a few weeks ago, there was a fellow manning every station of the night. 400 high school kids being ministered to, hearing the gospel because of the work of these fellows at this back table. That is an awesome, awesome thing and excites me greatly. Um, the Center for Creative Leadership, this is one of the biggest value-adding components I think we can have. They are ranked second in the world by Financial Times Magazine in executive leadership development. We had an awesome time. This is, this is some of our team at this table. Um, they have been excellent, not just professionally, but personally with the fellows, hanging out even outside of work. But um, So each, each year, we're going to go through with, with the Center for Creative Leadership and their curriculum for leadership development. Every week we spend two hours on Thursday afternoons with them. And uh, we go through things like learning to network, learning a lot about ourselves. We went through the Myers-Briggs test, Fire OB, I can't remember all of them. We went through Strengths Finders, assess what values drive us, um, and then learn to, to form goals in life, both personally, professionally, spiritually, and then strategies and how to implement those into your life. What, what are the practical steps that you take to achieve these things that God's calling us to? Um, and really just inspiration to pursue our calling. Um, so we also take a lot of trips. We actually just got back from St. Augustine in Orlando. Um, we started the year on a beach retreat. We went to the Kelly Clarkson <laughs> in the <laughs> concert. Um, Chris, would you like to do your Kelly Clarkson yeah, impersonation? Okay, Chris is going to be doing Kelly uh, karaoke <laughs> after this. You don't want to miss it. Um, we went to the Billy Graham Museum. That's a picture of us at the Billy Graham Museum. And Billy Graham is uh, Megan Harvey's hero. She, it's like he's a boy band or something whenever she starts talking. Kind of, kind of weird. Pray for her. Um, we went to Megan's Lake House. We went to Rock Ridge, Virginia on the Young Life trip. Um, we, went, we just got back from the Standing on Truth Apologetics Conference down in Orlando. Um, Sunday, we're leaving through Sunday to Chicago to help. Alan is actually the, the director of Anglican 1000, which is church planning in all of North America for the Anglican Church. So we're going to go help him with that conference and present the program on Wheaton College's campus. While we're up there, we'll shoot over to Indiana and present the program at Purdue University. So we're really excited to be building these pipelines with universities around the country so that we have a mix of both local and national fellows coming in. Um, and one thing that gives me the greatest joy of all is knowing that all eight of our fellows have said at some point that they, they really want to stay in Greensboro full time. And, and when you see the impact of that on a community, that something is something being the Lord is drawing young people to Greensboro and then they're catching a heart for our city and wanting to give back, that is an awesome thing. Um, yeah, and at the end of the year, we're going to go to Rwanda, and we have a partnership. Our church is partners with the church in, K not Kigali, Karangazi, Karangazi, Rwanda, 
and uh, we're going to be holding kids clinics there, doing soccer clinics, crafts, um, doing a worship service with the children in five different congregations throughout the week, and then we'll end with bringing all five churches together and having one large worship service with them. We're going to get to see the Genocide Museum, um, we'll see the Capital Kigali Hotel Rwanda, and then we're going to go on a little safari. Um, the last time I went on a safari, I almost got eaten by a lion, so I'm sitting in the, in the middle of the bench when we go to this time. <laughs> I really did. I want to hear the story. We'll talk after. But, um, so the future of the Fellows Program. We want to have presence on each college campus, multiple high schools, and various vocational fields in Greensboro. Like I said, our main goal, we want to develop young people, but we want to influence the city, our local high schools, universities, and the marketplace with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And um, there are 50,000 university students in Greensboro, North Carolina. 50,000. And as of now, there is nothing bringing those 50,000 university students together to hear about this Jesus, to hear who he is, the one that can save them forever, the one who loves them greater than anyone. And so we want to bring in a Veritas Forum so that um, speakers like Robbie Zacharias, John Piper, Philip Yancey, Tim Keller, you go down the list. We want to bring those in to debate with local professors to present the gospel and, and to really influence our local universities with the gospel of Jesus. Um, fellows locate from, from around the country relocating to our city each year for discipleship discovery and development. One thing I'm super excited about. We have just started a partnership with International Cooperating Ministries, ICM, a church planning organization around the world. In the last 25 years, they've planted almost 5,000 churches, and one of their agreements when they plant a church is that at each church they plant will build five daughter churches. So you do the math, that is a lot of churches they've made in the last 25 years. It's about 25,000 churches, and they have a plan for blanketing the rural earth every 25 miles so that everyone's within walking distance of the gospel. Well, we've, we've started to look into what happens when every year a cohort of 12 fellows decides to build one church. What happens? They're really building six churches when they build one. And if every year each fellows group decides to build a church together and will make that commitment and then make that commitment for each following year, literally we can blanket nations with churches. We can literally blanket nations building with each cohort building one church at a time. So I truly believe God is giving people in Greensboro not only a heart for the nations, but a strategy for the nations that we can actually do these things. We can, we can dream big and we can do these things. Um, so moving forward in 2013, this year we have eight fellows. <coughs> Next year we're bringing in 12 fellows and the applications are already rolling in. I'm really excited about that. I was actually crying this morning reading one guy's testimony um, who's, who's probably coming from Raleigh. Um, but we're bringing in 12 fellows next year. 2014, we're going to go to a, a model for 24 fellows a year. And that is bringing in 12 who are ministry-minded, who we will give even a more intense seminary experience during their classes here. Um, and then we'll have 12 who come in who are wanting to go into vocational work, where we'll do a lot of the leadership development and the marketplace type training with them while they're here. Um, so that is the plan for the future. Um, I want, before, before we go to that slide, um, can we pass out, can we pass out these cards? Um, we're going we're gonna to pass out some cards and I'll go over with you real quick, just on ways that you can partner with this thing if you truly feel like God is laying this, this program on your heart and laying these people on your heart and our city on your heart. Um, I'll go ahead and, and, and go through it, but there's several ways that you can partner, and they're all on the cards that you're about to get. The first is becoming a committee member, and what it means, what we're asking, we're asking big because we're believing big, but we ask committee members, anyone interested, to raise $1,200 within the next year, that's a hundred a month commitment, to be a part of a welcoming banquet and an end of year banquet. So every year when the fellows come in, we're going to have a banquet like this, really honoring them, showing them that our community is behind them. And then at the end of the year, we're going to have an award ceremony for them. And so when you're on the committee, you, you commit to raise money, you commit to be at the two banquets, and then to write a letter once a month to one of the fellows. 
So every month we want a fellow to receive an encouragement letter from someone in the community. And, um, and when you're a committee member, you'll receive monthly updates from the fellows program. So there will be a monthly newsletter that you get updating you on praises, on encouragements, on things we need prayer for, um, ways you can come join us on the family dinners each week. Um, the second partnership opportunity is if you're interested in providing an internship for a fellow next year. So what does it look like to provide an internship? Um, you give a fellow a job, and they work for you Monday through Wednesday, eight to nine hours a day, and it's a, we're asking that they be paid 1,000 a month. Um, that's the average cost for a first year college graduate with health insurance, car insurance, gas, and food. And we're, we're providing free host homes for them to live in. So that's pretty much a, a break-even price for them to live and, and live, live somewhat comfortably while they're here. Um, the third is if you're interested in being a mentor for a fellow next year. And that commitment is simply, I really want to see someone come to know the Lord and know them better. Holding them accountable, giving, giving weekly encouragement, and then at the end of each month, you'll simply email me and give me updates on, on how the times go. And every now and then we'll meet and grab coffee and you can tell me how to do my job better. That's one thing I want is accountability. Um, myself as well on, on how I can do better for the fellows. Um, the fourth, I'm interested in making a one-time donation for the fellows Africa trip. Like I said, we're getting ready to go to Africa May 12th through the 24th. And I don't just want to tell you you can donate, you can actually come with us. There are open spots, so if anyone's interested in going to Africa this year, um, Alan is going to be in the back right after this. Um, he spoke earlier. He's in the, in the nice jacket, but um, you can come talk to him if, if you're even interested in coming with us. The cost is going to be right around 3000 a person, and we'll be gone almost two weeks. We'll be gone 12 to 13 days. Um, the fifth is I'm interested in leading a class or discipleship hour. A few of the people in here have actually helped to lead a class or been one of the business owners or executives who come in and, and really invested in, in the fellows. And, this is an, an awesome, awesome thing. I think one of my favorite things that we do is them getting invested in by the community and to see leaders in our community coming to invest is a big thing. So if this is something you'd like to do, invest in, in the younger generation, please come see us after this. Um, and then the last one is I'm interested in hosting the fellows dinner on a Tuesday night. So every week, like I said, we go eat dinner from 5.30 to 7.30. The first hour is food. The second hour is fellowship. We do all kinds of things. We've, we've talked an hour on everybody's first girlfriend or boyfriend one time. We've memorized scripture. We've, we've learned from different, well, I forget all of We've learned from a lot of different things, but it's a great time. You can make it what you want. Just let us know so that we're not talking about crazy things. But um, that's pretty much it. And then the last slide is this, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, who gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. That's a big thing, and I truly believe it, and I pray that everyone here believes it as well. And uh, I love this. I, I don't want this to sound like a, a guilt trip or anything, but this is something I heard Dulles Rosser say, and it rocked my world when he said it. Dulles is the founder of International Cooperating Ministries. He's not, he was 90 years old at the time, and he was still traveling abroad, building churches himself all over the world. And he presented this thing, and at the end he said this. So how serious are we about this, Jesus? 